I've been trying the brain tap for a, a couple of days now and, and just the, the app and I, I haven't had my um, opportunity to, you know, try the glasses, if you will. Right. Um, but I was telling you beforehand, I've done a lot of different, you know, meditation and visualization, um, um, gratitude, I, all these different things. But the, the first section that I tried was literally just you talking about different things um, in the brain tap and how it works. And, you know, sometimes like I'll start tuning your voice out. And I found myself just kind of dozing off naturally. And I, I don't even know if I made it the full, I think the 16 minutes, I believe was the, the first uh, you know, intro. And then last night I actually did one of the ones that had more music with it, I think was 22 minutes long. And then I, I must've like woken up enough to realize to take my headphones out and, and put it back in. So what, it, what is the brain tap specifically doing when, you know, that's happening? Could you explain a little bit about that? Well, there's something in science called entrainment and everything in the physical universe is entrained to another. That's why it doesn't fly apart. You know, our, our planet is entrained around our sun as a bigger sphere and our moon is entrained around our earth. Well, we have entrainment principles. Our brain, if you and I were to take a spaceship and come to earth, before we got to earth, we could measure the frequency of the planet. It would go from 0.05 to 100. Hmm. Well, our brain does the same thing. And our brain does it in such a way that if we're around, because we're biologically linked to our environment uh, and our sun, really, the, the light from the sun. So let's say that you and I go down to the ocean and we're sitting talking. Well, without us even knowing it, our body is going to start to match that big body of water. And that big body of water happens to, happens to be resonating at an attuned frequency of 10 hertz. That happens to be alpha. That's why when people go to the ocean, they go, wow, I love the ocean. This is so great. Well, they love the ocean because the brain, in order to have that experience, has to produce acetylcholine. That's what happens when you're in alpha. So you start to feel like you're in love. It's what happens when you are physically in love. So anything you do in that, your brain basically attaches that chemical response to the ocean. Now, if we go to the mountains, we would be at 7.8 hertz frequency which is happens to be theta, our body would start to produce GABA. So some people will get tired when they get to the tree line, they go, I, I just can't stay awake because they haven't trained their brain to stay there. But if you were a guru and you wanted to meditate, there's no better place to go than the mountains because you're right there sitting in the middle of a big giant isochronic tone generator. You know, that's basically your body is trying to match. This happens with people too. We all know, you know, you get around people who think like you, that act like you, you know, you're a little more relaxed and free and you're, right. they actually now know that our gut biome actually communicates with one another. So if, if people have like, when the vegan meets the carnivore, you know, that's why they're having the big problems, right? <laughs> so, so we have this, uh, so we're more than just this physical nature in fact we're we're not even but 0.0000 what one percent solid and all the rest is information and energy so when we're when we think about what brain tap does it's introducing a frequency of not only a frequency like noje frequencies uh sophigio frequencies but also different pulse frequencies to get the brain to change because we want to get the brain to to move out of its fight or flight everyone out there I wouldn't say everyone, but 99% of the people, let's say, are in chronic low-level stress. This was before any COVID. You know, this is just running around, people doing it, doing it, doing it all day long. And in order to disengage their nervous system, unfortunately, most people go get a beer or a few beers. Some people say, I just need to have a glass of wine. I go, well, do you stop at one? Oh, well, I opened the bottle. You know, so, you know, you, you have this way of thinking. Right. So, and it's really about disengaging. So, once we disengage the brain, I tell people it's kind of like the old days of computers. If you had a Microsoft computer and something was going wrong, the first thing to do is what? Shut it off, right? You reboot it. And that fixes about everything. That's how our sleep cycle works. Mm -hmm. So if we can really get into those deep sleep cycles, that innate intelligence of our body restructures everything, reorganizes, and we wake up in the morning with a superpower. If we don't sleep, it's almost like somebody slipped a little kryptonite in our pocket and we, we can't function during the day. And yeah. so what we're doing is we're basically conditioning the brain to move back to its primal positioning because before all this technology, you know, before all the technology that we have on the planet, actually the last hundred years, we used to sleep 12 hours a day you might have had a stressful event four or five times a week. Now with cell phones and 
24 hour news cycles and all these things, we're getting bombarded. Now, check this out. Uh, if you have your phone in your bedroom, We've actually done tests where we've, we, can, we can actually record cortical responses in the brain, the deep resources of the brain that you don't even know they're happening. But we know when, before you make a decision, there's an electrical impulse. Well, we put somebody's phone 20 feet away in another room. We put them on uh, the EEG device. We're measuring their brain. Every time they got a text message, they didn't even know they were getting a test message consciously. Their brain was making a response. Really? So so there's was, quantum entanglement. was this the phone going, was there a noise of the phone or a vibration? Yeah, so they couldn't hear it. It was a ding or wow. ping. So we did this because we were, we kept getting this interference when we were trying to do a sleep program. Yeah. And the problem was that people kept having their phones near their bed. And even that's why we recommend like, you got to turn it off or put it on airplane mode where you don't get any notifications because our brain, we know, and this has to do with our ears. So when you think of the way we hear things, most people think we hear, we have like first attention. That's not really true. We have a filtering system. Our brain takes in 25,000 pieces of information every second. So let's say you and I are having dinner at your favorite restaurant. We're sitting around talking, blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden you hear somebody a few tables over go, is this a fad? Is it, or is this going to last? You know, and it, 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 then your brain goes, what? Because we, we know what that is. So our reticular activator points that out. Mm -hmm. Other than that, all the rest of the noise in the room is just background, but we're still processing it. That's why some people don't like going to the malls at Christmas, you know, when it's just so crazy yeah. because their body can't process all that information and filter out what they really need to learn. So what, what we've done is we've figured out what causes the brain to be entrained. Our brain loves patterns. So if we can give it the right pattern and change that up, when you're talking about neuroplasticity, mm -hmm. um, maybe we can talk a little bit more about this if you'd like, but we have yeah. a a study that we just did, it was a pilot study that's now going, Seminole College is now helping us put together a hundred people to do this in Florida. The, the pilot study showed a 49% neuroplastic change in women, 55, 65, in just six weeks. Now that's unheard of. These were, these were all women that were diagnosed by their doctor as having onset dementia. Mm -hmm. When we sent them back in six weeks, the doctor said, I wish you'd have showed up like this six weeks ago because I wouldn't have done it. We, we had them tested with the Cambridge Science Scoring, which is a, an online quiz you have to take. It tells you if you have dementia or not. Yeah. They all had it before. They didn't have it six weeks later. So we they had, were they were they were just on on the brain tap where they were they yes. using the uh, is they glasses? were using the visor too the, vi yeah, the visor they were using okay. the lights okay because the, the lights the lights actually uh, for those that don't know what light does especially the we people go why do you have lights in the eyes and the ears yeah. well when you if, if you've ever been to a lecture and you couldn't hear the lecture but as soon as you turned your attention and now you could get line of sight with the lecture you could hear them that's because if you don't see them about thirty percent of your brain shuts off. Hmm. but as soon as you see them it's part of our primitive reflexes so also when you engage light in the brain with the eyes you actually the whole brain has to activate to process that information even if it doesn't have any information to carry on that frequency but what we're going to carry is all the new stuff that they want to do so then the lights through the ears all the hemoglobin think of your body like a solar panel you're walking around all day long you're absorbing light light frequencies. If we don't get that, there's a disorder called seasonal affective disorder, right? Sad. Yeah. Now the, the, the deal is though, every cell of your body has something called chromoforms in it, which is like little mini batteries. And it stores the energy from the sun or from light sources or from sound. Um, all that energy is built up. If we have enough, then we produce ATP. We have all this energy that we need to do. Mm -hmm. Well, if we don't have the, if we don't have ATP, we're not going to process even the most powerful nutrients because we can't break them down and use them as energy. So what we want to do is the brain, which is, you know, the central processor of the body, if it doesn't have energy, it can't do its job. So we want to deliver energy there. So the, the hemoglobin absorbs the light, circulates it through the body. And then what's something that's really big right now, the mitochondrial health factor, you know, that everybody's talking about, right. what the mitochondria wants more than anything else is light because it's energy it wants that energy so we're gonna that if the mitochondria is dying or what they call apoptosis then it actually attracts that the hemoglobin that has the energy it will exchange that energy and that cell will actually start back up again with the new with a new action set and so it basically returns to, to health yeah and if we if we do that right 
then we've also built a pathway into the body of uh, through vasodilation, blood flow, and circulation. And at that moment, it happens. The body actually produces nitric oxide. In not to be confused with what you get at the dentist, but what this does, <laughs> it creates vasodilation. So in our brains, when people have headaches, for instance, it's it's really very similar to if you took your finger and you wrapped a rubber band around it and the mm -hmm. tip of your finger starts hurting. As soon as you take the rubber band off, the pain goes away. Right. That's what's happening in the brain. It's not getting enough oxygen. So it's basically signaling to you, hey, you're killing off some brain cells here. We need to get some oxygen in there. Maybe you're dehydrated. Maybe you didn't eat the right foods. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're just stressed out in those that stress restricts those uh, capillaries all over the whole body. So, you know, what we want to do is open those up, get more blood flow circulation. And so that's the, the light is also at a beat frequency. So just like you're hearing it, our, our skin is the most, um, if you will, it, think of your ears. They were once skin, it folded and made an ear, it folded and made an eye, it folded and made your nose, it folded and made your, your lips. These proteins all folded and did that, but they started out as skin matter. So your skin is a receiver. We've all had experiences where we're watching TV and somebody walks up behind us and we feel them, right. you know, before it's not just a Jedi mind trick, you know, our, our brain can do that. Right. Yeah. And so we're receiving all this information. Some people are more sensitive than others, but depending upon who you are, we need to tune in to get the brain instead of dysregulating. What was happening with these women was their brain was dis dysregulated their left hemisphere was actually moving slower than their right hemisphere. Mm -hmm. So that meant information delivered to the cerebral cortex was coming in at different speeds and they became anxious, irritable. Um, they would get depression. This was all a symptom of brain speed. Once we trained their brain, we were able to, the biggest thing I think that the preliminary test showed us is that you can reorganize after a, a traumatic event. We all know older people that get traumatized in the morning or stressful event, whatever happens, they're still talking about it that night, the next week, you know, you can't seem to shake it. Yeah. And really it's about disengaging this nervous system and allowing the innate intelligence of our body to take over and, and do what it does best, which is to keep us healthy. So you, so you were able to get them to have their left and right hemisphere basically be working together again. I mean, how, how does we, that we, we had them say they synchronized in six weeks. Wow. And then as long as they do a brain tap session um, three times a week, every 72 hours, it will maintain that because our nervous system tries to reset every 72 hours. That's why like weightlifters just found that out um, without knowing it. You know, you lift weights every other day yeah. because our body gets stressed out. It needs time to recover, stress it out, needs time to recover. Our brain, we can do up to three sessions of brain tap a day. And that's exactly what we did with these people mm -hmm. because we have sessions in the morning. If you look on the app, when you're looking at there's ones for wake up. Yeah. Well, if you have to use a chemical to wake up, which means coffee or tea or stimulant, then your body's not regulating correctly. And your body's always looking for ways to circumvent having to do anything. The, you know, if you do it for it, if you like, for instance, if you drink coffee every morning, first thing in the morning, then your body's going to say, okay, we don't have to, we don't have to excite these brain waves. Right. But there's a brain wave called SMR, sensory motor rhythm. And as we get, you know, better looking and more intelligent with age, certain things happen to our brain, right? Yeah. And people think balance has to do with exercise. We proved that wrong. Hmm. Balance has to do with brain waves. If you don't have SMR brain waves, you will not have balance. Somebody who has super balance, I'm going to show you somebody who has super SMR brain waves. Like right. when we work with our Olympians or our pro athletes, they are just maxed out and they can go there and get into that flow state. And they have it. And people that are losing their balance and, and can't, you know, basically move and think, you know, that's what separates us from most other animals. We can move and think instead of just reacting. But that takes a lot of brain power. You know, like basketball, for instance, is high level physics. You know, they're just doing it naturally. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there's a skill component to that, right? So naturally their brain has to work and help the proprioception. So like chicken or the egg type thing, like if you're doing that, your brain is naturally going to be more active, correct? Yes. That's why like when they're, when our doctors are working with like autistic children, they'll do something like the metronome where they have to do things with both arms. And we like doing like martial arts because mm -hmm. it shows that's one way to get the brain engaged.